Okay, welcome. Uh, welcome to everybody here on the call uh, this this afternoon. Uh, we're still waiting a few, for a few more people to jump on the call, um, but we'll, we'll go ahead and get started now uh, to honor everyone's time. So welcome uh, to this webinar today on spiritual formation studies uh, at Gordon-Conwell. Uh, my name is Daniel Montanez. I work here in the admissions office as the alumni engagement officer. Uh, and we're really excited to be hosting this webinar uh, for you today. Uh, since we have a small group of people here starting up, how about we just go around the room real quick and introduce ourselves. Uh, so we can start with the admissions team if you like. We can start with Sarah and then we can go around and hear who else is here in the room with us. All right, thanks, Annie. Yeah, I'm Sarah Sotelo. I'm the director of admissions at the Hamilton campus, and we are just so glad that you're able to join us today. So thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Katie. I'm the guest services coordinator at Hamilton. I'm Kristen. I'm the admissions representative at Gordon Conwell Hamilton campus. Great. And we have uh, Haley, Kate, and Peter here. If you'd like to uh, introduce yourself and let us know where you're calling from. Hey, I'm Haley. Um, I'm calling from Lithuania. Um, so it's 7 p.m. here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate. I'm um, from Boston. I'm actually um, taking my first class at Gordon Conwell right now with uh, Dr. Adams, but I'm um, thinking about continuing on in a spiritual formation degree program. So interested in getting more information to kind of um, decide if that's the right decision to make the commitment for the long term. Thank you, Kate. Okay, well, let's go ahead uh, and jump in then. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we have the opportunity to hear from uh, Dr. Gwenvire Adams. Uh, she is the professor of church history here at Gordon Conwell, and she uh, directs uh, the, the spiritual formation uh, program here at Gordon Conwell. So we're, we have the opportunity this morning uh, just to hear from her uh, about the programs that we offer and, and, and hopefully uh, get to answer some of the questions that you might have. So uh, Dr. Adams, I'll go ahead and pass it to you uh, to get us started. Okay. Um, well, as I was uh, thinking and praying about our time together today, I thought of a, a prayer that actually Augustine uh, of Hippo, the North African theologian, uh, composed. And I thought it was very appropriate for what we're talking about this morning. So I'll just, I'll read it and you can pray it if you want, uh, or just listen along. And it's his prayer to seek God continually, which I think is part of what we want in the Master of Arts in Spiritual Formation is to inculcate in ourselves and also in others that we serve a desire to seek God uh, continually. So I'll, I'll read Augustine's prayer. Um, and hello, David, who are you? Oh, he's not yet connected fully. All right, so uh, oh Lord, my God, I believe in you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in so far as I can, in so far as you have given me the power, I have sought you. I became weary and I labored. O oh Lord, my God, my sole hope, help me to believe and never to cease seeking you. Grant that I may always and ardently seek out your countenance. Give me the strength to seek you, for you help me to find you, and you have more and more given me the hope of finding you. Here I am before you with my firmness and my infirmity. Preserve the first and heal the second. Here I am before you with my strength and my ignorance. Where you have opened the door to me, welcome me at the entrance. Where you have closed the door to me, open to my cry. Enable me to remember you, to understand you, and to love you. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so I thought that was kind of, uh, it kind of captures um, part of our longings, I think. And then I wanted just to read uh, a very short psalm that I keep finding myself drawn back to repeatedly during this time that we find ourselves in. There's something about the stability that this points to, I think it was very helpful during this time where so many things are in flux in our world. And it's just, it's Psalm 93, and it's just five verses long. 
the Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, O Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days, O Lord. So I find that a psalm I keep coming back to. I hope that's an encouragement to you. So we're talking about the MASF, and uh, this is a degree that is near and dear to my heart. And it's a, a degree that I've been closely involved with uh, from the beginning in, in its design and in its execution and so on. And I have uh, really delighted in the students that have become a part of this degree over the years. And it's a, it's a, it's a degree that has attracted a lot of different kinds of of people and different callings uh, that they're headed towards. And, and so it's, it's a lot of fun to, to be in classes with people from all of these different perspectives. And part of that is true of, of Gordon-Conwell in general. Um, so it's not necessarily unique to the spiritual formation degree, but just to give you a sense of the kinds of callings that people have gone into um, or have come to the, to the degree and um, sought to go into, because some of them are still uh, in process. So uh, there's a Harvard chaplain, for example. There are people from InterVarsity and crew, so working in college ministry kinds of things. Uh, the associate principal flutist for the Boston Symphony Orchestra did the MASF. And one of the things that I have found that often happens with the MASF is people come in with uh, an area of specialty that they're particularly interested that is perhaps outside of what we teach at Gordon-Conwell. And then they do the MASF and bring that together with what they already have in place. And, and they find some really interesting um, integration happening. And so for her, she discovered uh, a passion that she didn't know about before that I think God had already designed her for, which is to integrate theology and the arts um, and Looks like Dr. Adams froze briefly. I'm sure she'll come back shortly. Oh. Oh, you're back. You're, doc you're back. Oh, did I, did I freeze? You froze, <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh no, how long was I gone? <laughs> uh, you were speaking about um, um, the, the flutist uh, and how it lined up with her, her, her calling. And that's where you had to All right. Let me just switch to a different um, thing. Let's see, and maybe a second. Okay, so is that there? Okay. All right, so yeah, so she did some really exciting things. She, she brought uh, performers in from the Boston Symphony Orchestra and she did, uh, she brought Jeremy Begbie and did some really creative things with spiritual formation, the integration of spiritual formation with, with the arts. We've had a, uh, someone who came who was interested in and had been doing and wanted to integrate with uh, spiritual formation, his surfing ministry, he came from Spain and um, has integrated spiritual formation with that. Uh, somebody else was doing wilderness ministry. And so she has graduated from the degree and is now integrating spiritual formation into wilderness ministry. And we've had retreat and conference center director, hospital chaplaincy, spiritual direction, um, artist, actor, poet. I mean, we've all sorts of uh, different kinds of things that have come together with uh, this area of spiritual formation. So, it's a, it's a degree that I think draws a lot of people partly because of its flexibility. It allows you to, um, to concentrate in different sub areas um, and to integrate the spiritual formation with other kinds of disciplines as well. And, and so um, 
that's one of the one of the things I think that people really like about the degree. And you can also do a certificate uh, in spiritual formation as well. That is six courses that are directly in the area of, of spiritual formation. So uh, let's see what might be interesting. I think some of the courses that we offer in the degree are uh, some of them are required, and then some of them you can um, select as electives. So some of the required courses are spiritual formation for ministry, which is an introductory course that tends to focus on the spiritual disciplines. And then the dynamics of spiritual life course, which is about um, something that I've been working on, a model of spiritual formation that takes uh, story and the structure of story and integrates that uh, with theology and history and uh, practical <laughs> matters such as uh, taking people through their own life stories and helping them to understand the spiritual dynamics that are at play in them and how God has worked in them, helps them discover their design, their unique design uh, and calling and various other things. I can go into more detail about that if you're interested. And we have multicultural counseling that's required in the degree. Um, and then there are electives such as medieval spirituality, global spirituality and leadership. Uh, Steve Machia, who's the author of Crafting a Rule of Life, is going to be teaching a, a course on um, contemplative kinds of spirituality. So, and then there are courses that you can take that, that are cross-registered with counseling as well, things like ministering to women in pain, uh, group process. And then there are uh, directed studies that we do as groups. And those are in things like arts, the arts and spiritual formation, prayer, Sabbath, uh, spiritual formation and theological education. These are all kinds of things that are available if you're interested in them. Um, so I, I don't know if that's enough as a, just a opening <laughs> there. I'm happy to answer questions. That's perfect. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Yes, yeah, so we will have uh, an opportunity uh, for, for those of you here on the call. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them down. Uh, I do have a few questions that were already submitted beforehand, so I'll work uh, my way through some of those. And uh, if you have any other lingering questions after that, please feel free to unmute yourself uh, and ask during that time. So uh, we'll go ahead and jump in with a uh, probably the most difficult question uh, out of all of them that I was asked. And uh, so that way we, we get the hard stuff out of the way. Uh, what uh, would you say is the difference between spiritual formation and psychotherapy, Dr. Adams? Ah, right. Well, spiritual formation is an umbrella term. Actually, I should say, spiritual formation as a term gets used differently by different people. And uh, the same thing with spiritual direction. Um, so the way that I conceive of spiritual formation is that it is the broad umbrella term and that there are lots of different models of spiritual formation. And that's part of what we do at Gordon-Conwell is to introduce you to a lot of different models. And so we introduce you to spiritual direction and we have a partnership with SELA um, and through them you can do a, a course and I'll allow the admissions people to talk about exactly how that, how that works. But if you are interested in spiritual direction, which is a very specific thing, you can do a, a course uh, through them, which can then uh, come into the, the degree and so that's one of the models. That's a very contemplative model. And spiritual direction is uh, focused on helping people to listen to God, to hear what God is saying to them through the scriptures and through, um, through just listening through the Holy Spirit and that kind of thing. It's, it's very much a prayer-oriented sort of thing. And uh, people can meet either one-on-one -on -one with spiritual directors or they can meet as groups with a spiritual director. So that's one model. Now, um, there have been lots of different models throughout the history of the church. And so we seek to introduce you to a lot of these so that you can adapt them and combine them for the different kinds of ministries that you might be involved in and for different kinds of people that you might be serving um, in your ministries. So that's uh, one thing. But uh, in terms of psychotherapy, one, one of the helpful things to do is to differentiate between psychotherapy and spiritual direction. And so psychotherapy, usually when someone comes to a psychotherapist, they have a particular problem that they want to solve, that they want to have solved. And so the psychotherapist then helps them process, work through um, 
that problem and solve it. Sometimes the presenting problem turns out not to be the actual problem. There might be a deeper problem or another problem and they help them work through that. Um, whereas uh, spiritual formation can be used in conjunction with psychotherapy, but it is usually referring more to the spiritual realm, uh, to somebody's relationship with God. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit of the differences perhaps there, but they're, they can overlap and they can be used in conjunction with each other. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Uh, the next question that we had, uh, is it possible to do uh, uh, the program, the MASF, or maybe even the, the, the Sugar program 100% online, or a combination maybe of online and low residency classes? Uh, they mention uh, weekend classes, summer intensive, uh, things of that nature. Right. Well, correct me on this, admissions people, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm wrong. But um, my understanding at the moment is that the MASF, as it's currently configured, uh, can be done 60% uh, online. But the way that we have structured a new program that hasn't yet been formally launched because of the COVID situation, um, it was going to launch last week. Um, so it was kind of sad last week not to be able to actually do it. But because, uh, because of COVID, we weren't able to have classes this summer uh, in residence. But one of the exciting new ventures that Gordon Conwell is, is launching next summer will be Summer Seminary on the Hill. And that will allow people to fly in from wherever for two weeks and to take two one-week classes as intensives. And so you take over the course of three summers, you would be able to take six courses um, just by doing the summer seminary thing. And, uh, and then the rest you could do online. And so in that way, it's sort of a hybrid program. Um, and you can do the ones that are online. There are all different kinds of courses. There are ones that are fully asynchronous, um, meaning that you don't meet at the same time as other people. Um, and things like SEMLINK courses are like that. And then there's some additional ones that are like that. Then there are ones that are what we call digital live, uh, where you are in the, on Zoom <laughs> with other students. Uh, it is live, and there may be people in the classroom with the faculty uh, person and people online, and it's a class that's running live. Um, and then there are classes that are combinations of those two things uh, that are hybrid kinds of classes. So at the moment, the MASF can be done uh, without coming into living at the Hamilton campus, <laughs> um, other than those summer sessions. Uh, we, going forward, there are, there are new sorts of configurations that are happening, um, and maybe the admissions people can speak to that more specifically. Uh, some of it has to do with ones that are going to be newly accredited. Some of it has to do with adjustments that may be made because of COVID. So um, there may be new things, new configurations coming down the pike. Um, I think you can do the, M, you can do the spiritual formation concentration uh, in the MACM, which is a fully online degree. Am I right on that? Yeah. So, um, so that, that will be one thing that will be immediately available once that gets accredited as the new configuration of courses. Um, but that's a shorter degree with a different name. <laughs> so. I, I do believe that the certificate is available a hundred percent online. Is that yeah. correct, Dr. Adams? Yeah. So that, that is, would be the most immediate fully online option. Um, and then we are, like Dr. Adams mentioned, there's, we're, we're in this interesting season where we're currently admitting folks to our current degree process, degree options, but um, I believe there's going to be a vote this summer on what new degree options will look like. And no matter what degree you go into starting in the fall, there will still be a, you can either continue in that degree program that you were admitted to, or you could switch to uh, one of the new degree programs. Um, and so we are in this uh, kind of interesting transition period, um, but us in the, in the admissions office, office are more than happy to walk you through all of those logistics. We basically just ground all of our conversations in what is your vocational goal, where are you called, and then let us help you figure out the logistics to that. So, yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Um, I have a couple other questions and then we'll open it up uh, to the people here on the call. 
uh, one of those questions, and I believe you've already uh, hinted to this, uh, Dr. Adams, uh, is spiritual formation an area you can minor or specialize in? Yes, um, definitely. So, yeah, I mean, some of the one, at least one of the degrees that's coming down the pike is going to be a create your own degree kind of thing. Am I right? So, I mean, there would be certain core, there's a certain core, but then the, the elective array, I think you'll be able to craft your own combination, I think. Um, yeah, so, so one way to think of it is as the six uh, course certificate is a little bit of a plug and play into a number of different degrees. And so it can currently obviously fit into the MASF. Um, and, it, and in one of the new degrees that's, uh, that I believe will be coming, Lord willing, um, it's going to be an MHES, Master of Arts in Theological Studies. Spiritual formation is an official concentration um, con yeah, in that degree. And that, I think, will have 10 out of the 20 courses. Um, and then it can be plugged into the MACM. And I think, is there another degree? Maybe the MAS, MACS right now, the MA in Christian Studies, if we plugged in there. Um, yeah, so there are a bunch of places that you could minor it in, as it were. Great. Great, thank you. And the last question that we have here um, is, what fall 2020 courses would be uh, good to take towards an MA or Certificate in Spiritual Formations uh, for this coming semester, uh, if you know of any that you would recommend? Right. Um, oh, and I sh and I just remembered something that I that might be interesting is the the co-curricular sort of practicum piece of the MASF, where uh, for people that are in residency at the Hamilton campus, you you have access um, to Pierce discipleship groups, to the discipleship experience, um, and to life story exegesis. These get offered in different ways at different times, um, and so we're looking into how we can do those online. Um, but those are some other things that are available, especially if you come onto campus. And then, um, all right, so you were asking about fall courses. This fall, there's going to be spiritual formation for ministry, which is one of the core requirements for uh, the concentration. And then um, ministering to women in pain is another course. And then... Uh, I'm going to be doing a directed study with a group of students that uh, is on the arts and spiritual formation. So that's something that could be done uh, also from a, a distance as well. So those are the three that are directly in the spiritual formation um, concentration. But then, of course, there are lots of courses that are online that are, uh, well, those, those three are online. Um, and then there are lots of courses that go towards the core, you know, your theology and your church history, the church history surveys being offered this fall. And um, yeah, so, so there are multiple courses that you can take towards the degree as a whole this fall. Great. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Adams. We really appreciate you uh, just taking some time to answer some of those initial questions. At this time, we'll go ahead and open it up. If you have any questions for uh, Dr. Adams or for the admissions team, uh, we're all here. Um, so feel free to let us know. Uh, Haley, I see that you submitted a question. Did you want to go ahead and ask here to the group today? Yeah. Hey, I'm wondering about, um, it sounds like the, the three classes you just mentioned, I'm wondering, are those all going to be synchronous in the fall or will they be asynchronous? And then... Um, if the classes are synchronous, what is sort of the class format? Is it primarily lecture-based or more discussion-based? Or I guess I'm just curious what the classes look like. Yeah. Well, the classes vary a great deal. So it really depends on both the professor and the material. So a course like uh, Church History Survey, um, this fall is going to be sort of half-half. Half of it will be asynchronous. Half of it is a weekend course. So it'll be taught Friday nights and Saturday morning, and that will be digital live. And because it's such a content heavy class, it'll be mostly lecture. But other classes like spiritual formation for ministry are, uh, at least when they've been done in the classroom context, they've been very heavily uh, discussion because yeah, it leads to that. Uh, that one is offered both in the class and online as a digital at the same time. So that's synchronous. Um, 
And then uh, ministering to women, I think, is digital life. That's being taught by Karen Mason in the counseling department. I believe it's both in class and digital life at the same time. So I think that one has a lot of discussion and student presentations because it's, it's a very popular class that uh, deals with lots and lots of different issues that, that women are dealing with and different students do different presentations and then, then Dr. Mason does lectures and there's, uh, from what I understand, there's quite a bit of discussion in that. Um, so yeah, it, it really varies. There's a lot of variety in the courses. And then something like a directed study would be a combination of uh, probably mini lectures and conversation around books that have been read together. Um, so more like a seminar style. Great. Great. Did anyone from the admissions team want to add anything to that or uh, are we good to go? Awesome. I just um, added the link for the fall 2020 course schedule if anybody wants to go check it out. Great. Uh, awesome. Any other questions uh, here on the call uh, towards Dr. Adams or towards the admissions team uh, in preparation for, for the fall semester? Or just in general on the topic of spiritual formation? <laughs> Um, I have a question. I think this is maybe more for the admissions team. Um, is it possible to like book a time to talk with one of you through the different degrees and like look through that together? How would we go about doing that? I can chat you my um, email address and we can schedule a time via Calendly. Have you heard of that? Okay, awesome. So I'll put my email address in here and you can just shoot me an email and then um, we can set up a time. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, any final questions? Um, I have one question. My name's Kristen and um, I'm going to be going for the Mako degree. Um, and you didn't mention, so I just wanted to double check, is uh, there a spiritual formation concentration if you plan your class as well for the Mako degree? I think it would be tricky to do it as in inside of the Mako degree. We have a number of students who take it as an add-on. You wouldn't okay. have to do the whole MAS if it's just a one-year add-on that way. So yeah, you, there are students that do both, but, but it's not two whole years for the MASF then because you've heard oh, sure. quite a bit. But yeah. the certificate is only six classes, so then yeah. that could be an add-on. Okay. Yeah, you could do the certificate as an add-on. That would be a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Any final questions? Yeah, I'm just going to, can I just add something on, on top of what Kristen was saying is that, yeah, one of the things that I find exciting about the degree, um, the way it's done, there, there are a lot of ways to do a spiritual formation degree and a lot of wonderful kinds of approaches and stuff. And I think one of the things that I like about this particular approach to it is um, it's playing off of or within uh, one of the strengths, I think, of the seminary as a whole, which is the multi-denominational um, approach to things and and so and the global, the emphasis on the global. And so it, I, I really enjoy having a lot of different approaches um, to spiritual formation and providing for students, I don't personally provide all of them, <laughs> with, together with my colleagues, um, helping students to come away with lots of different tools that they can use in lots of different situations and the skill set to be able to go into any situation, to be able to assess and analyze what is going on there and to be able to craft, um, to bring together resources from the past and from the present, uh, from the word, of course, um, and, and to be able to help lead people uh, to grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I find that really exciting. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a joy to be a part of the whole thing, to see that happening in, in students' lives as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Adams, and thank you. Uh, everybody uh, for being on the call this afternoon. 
Uh, our prayer is that you will find Gordon Conwell to be a place where you can encounter academic rigor as well as deep spiritual formation. Uh, and I think you will definitely find that through the programs that we offer here. Uh, we're here to serve you in whatever way that you can, in whatever way that we can. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the uh, email address for, for our, our admissions in admissions office in the chat, admrep.gordonconwell.edu. Uh, you also have Christians, and, and I'll write my own there as well. And um, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us. We're here to help you in whatever way that we can. So, uh, Sarah, could I ask you to close us in prayer? Totally. I'll pray. Jesus, we just thank you so much for your heart to know us and to, to grow us, Lord God, that you desire to have a relationship with us and to form us um, in this life. And Father, I pray right now for these amazing people who hear that call and have a burden to be serving your people and to serve your kingdom. We pray right now that you would give them wisdom as they are seeking their next steps, um, that you would provide in miraculous ways uh, the resources that are necessary to continue in that call, um, Father, we also just thank you so much. We give thanks for Dr. Adams and for her heart to serve students and to build up your kingdom in this way. We pray right now that you would just, um, that you would remain constantly present in our lives and that you would remind us of your love for us uh, on a daily, daily basis, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Dr. Adams. Thank you. Thank you.